sure do like to sing about the goodness of the Lord. I've always had a place to sleep close to where and food to eat. God has been so good to me. so good to me God has been so good to me I'm thankful for a fine family the little church that I attend and for all my Christian so good to me I like this I'm version I'm so glad I live where men are free yeah. where there's love and liberty God has been so good to me if all I had he took away then I still would have to say God has been so good to me. God has been so good to me. I'm thankful for a fine family. The little church that I attend and for all my Christian friends God has been so good to me If y'all don't mind, I'm going to get her to sing that last verse again You know, we're quickly seeing our freedoms being eroded right. I mean taken right. away every day right. It's just amazing to me how things are coming together And the, the rapture can't be far away right. I'm listening for a sound just it's any so day But I, you know, it breaks my heart to see the things that's going on in this country The, the things that's against Christianity, against God, in God's face, you know I just want y'all to, y'all help, help us out here. Stand to your feet if you don't mind. Help us sing this last verse. And think about the freedoms that we enjoy still. We still live in the best country in the world. So we better enjoy it. Yeah, let's praise the Lord for this. I'm so glad I live where men are free. Where there's love and liberty. God has been so good to me. nor any great parades to honor me. But there's a record book my name is written in, and it was recorded there when I was born again. No one can blot it out, it's sealed forevermore. It's in that book of life, 
kept by the Lord. For every deed I do, for every word I say, there is a record kept until the judgment day. My name will not be lost, misplaced or overlooked, for it's kept safely in God's record book. For there's a record book, my name is written in, and it was recorded there when I was born again. No one can blot it out, it's sealed forevermore, it's in that book of life, kept by the Lord. Well, it's a blessing to be back at Canaanland Baptist Church. I told Renee, I said, I think that's a lot of yellow, Renee. But she, she said, well, it looks all right. So I said, all right then. So uh, I'm stuck with it now. Amen. Can't do nothing about it. But uh, <clears throat> see, but uh, we're glad to be here tonight and appreciate uh, this church and appreciate what you try to do in your community and on uh, visitation. And then through the World Missions Program, World Evangelism Program, it's a great blessing. We're glad to be a part of that. Thank you so much for your faithful support for our family and uh, the work that we are trying to do for the Lord. And the Lord's blessed in a great and mighty way, just in a lot of avenues and areas. And uh, Though uh, a lot of doors seem to be closed and remain closed, new doors are opening up. And we thank the Lord for that. Amen. And uh, He's uh, blessing some of the materials that we're producing. And I don't have one with me, but we now have our third coloring book with the Tater characters, Let's Learn About Love. And some say it's the best one that we've did yet. And once again, it has about 30 verses of scripture printed out in it, just like the other two coloring books on forgiveness and mission, missionaries. And I appreciate what the Lord is doing with that. Uh, not only reaching young people, but also uh, reaching their parents through the challenges that are in it. And another, uh, another item the Lord is, uh, is using in a great and mighty way. I don't think I've brought one over here before, but we have an emergency responders edition of our Rock of Ages New Testament. And it has the policeman's badge, the fireman's badge, and the medical badge on the front of it. And uh, a couple of our missionaries are determined to put one in every in the hands of every state trooper in the United States of America. They've already co covered several states and they are progressing along and trying to put one of these New Testaments into the hands of every state trooper. And they have got some churches fired up and these churches are getting cases of them and reaching out to their local fire departments and hospitals and doctor's offices. And I appreciate what the Lord is doing through these Testaments. And we... Uh, are always getting mail back and letters of uh, response and good response of people either receiving the Lord or growing in the, growing in the Lord as a result of these materials. And thank you so much for having a part in our family and what we're trying to do for the Lord. And I, I can't wait to get to heaven to see all the results Amen. of it all. We'll never know here, but uh, thank you so much, Canaan Land Baptist Church. Amen. And uh, Psalm 51 tonight, Psalm 51, and much reference been made to the psalmist and how he uh, praised the Lord and different scriptures has been quoted. And Brother Stanley uh, reminded us there in the psalm, it talks about David, uh, or maybe it's Samuel, I can't remember where it's, where it's at, but uh, being, I think it's linked in the psalms, it might be in Samuel, where it talked about him being a man after God's own heart, and people uh, hear that, and maybe you even read it, and you think, how could that be? I mean, this man messed up many times in his life, yeah, but he always had a desire to be right, and he always had a desire to get right, and he didn't want to stay wrong with God, he didn't want to stay uh, he didn't want to stay in his sin. He was not happy that way. And that's what we find in Psalm 51. And we find here uh, this man uh, committing sin. I didn't know this for years, and I still don't understand it all. And you may not know, may not care, but I'm throwing it out there. But uh, thank God for educated people that knows how to uh, 
put things together, but they tell me all the Psalms are not in chronological order. Amen. In other words, uh, Psalm 1 uh, uh, don't necessarily come before Psalm 2 and so on. And Psalm 51, they say, was written about a year after David committed his sin with Bathsheba and Uriah and the nation of Israel. And Psalm 32 actually is the result of when he got his heart right with the Lord. And if you read those Psalms, you, you can see how that uh, would work right there. Amen. And Psalm 32 shows us the picture of a person who has had their sin forgiven and cleansed. Amen. And parts of it are quoted in the New Testament. And I'm thinking about, uh, it says, Blessed is the man whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity. And blessed is he whose sin is covered. Uh, he said, Shout for joy. This is in Psalm 32. I'm quoting different verses out of it. Shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. Amen. And so I tell you, when you've got the sin taken care of, there's nothing between you and God. You can rejoice and enjoy life. Amen. I want to preach tonight from one verse of Scripture. And I want to use these psalms and make several uh, comments. And, and I asked the Lord, I, I, I probably use this before maybe over to school, but it's, it's going to be different. I got a lot of new material. And I, I told her, nice, that's all I needed was more material to put with this. And so I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, uh, if it's your will, please help me to stay on track and hit the high points, give them what they need and be brief. Amen. And I hope, uh, hope the Lord will help us tonight from uh, the word of God and through the preaching. I know his word will help us. And so uh, you pray for us for a few minutes tonight, and we'll certainly try to give you something to challenge you and uh, be an encouragement to you along life's way. Psalm 51, and the Bible said, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. And let me skip down, and I want to use this verse, but I want to make reference some of these other verses, but uh, verse number 10, he said, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. I'm glad the believer in the New Testament or and, 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 and in the future uh, since the New Testament, I'm glad the believer don't have to pray for the Lord not to take his Holy Spirit away from me. And Jesus promised to send us another comforter and said he'd abide with us forever. David did not have the promise that we had and therefore that's why he maybe prayed this prayer and had this fear that he saw the Lord take his spirit away from Saul and saw what uh, the uh, what happened in Saul's life and he feared the same thing happening to himself and so he said take not the Holy Spirit from me restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit then shall I teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall I'll be converted unto thee. And I want to focus on verse 12 tonight. And uh, he's prayed many things in these first 12 verses. And this is a prayer of repentance tonight. And uh, you, to, to really get the most out of Psalm 51, we don't have time to do it tonight, but you really have to read 2 Samuel 11 and 2 Samuel 12. In 2 Samuel 11, we find this man committing sin. And, in, and not only that, but many sins he committed, amen, and, and he lied and he murdered and he stole another man's wife and committed adultery and he cheated and he, he, uh, he uh, sinned against uh, his own household and his own self and he sinned against the nation of Israel, he sinned against Uriah, he sinned against Bathsheba, but he sinned against God more importantly. And so in 2 Samuel 11, we find one committing sin. In 2 Samuel 12, God sent his man along and he confronted this man about his is sin. I'm glad there's still some of that going on today. There's not a whole lot of it going on, but thank God for man of God. And you have one here at this church, and you have others in this church, men of God, who's not afraid to name sin and cry out against it, as the Bible says, and confront people about their sin. Right is still right, and wrong is still wrong, and sin still sin. It don't matter if the laws change or the multitude goes that way. Same 
like I read, God said to Moses, follow not the multitude to do evil. Just because most people's doing something don't make it right. What makes it right or wrong is what the word of God says. Boy, you could say a lot about that, but uh, here in 2 Samuel 11, one committing sin, 2 Samuel 12, he's confronted about his sin. And in Psalm 51, we find the confession of his sin. We find this man confessing his sin. And as we mentioned in Psalm 32, we find the result of that confession. And this is no doubt one of the greatest psalms ever written. And, and it is a psalm of repentance and restoration. And though it was written about 3,000 something years ago, it, uh, it might have been written yesterday. And it is a psalm that we can all relate to because at one time or another, and we've all been in the same position as the psalmist is in here where we sinned against God and, and thank God for this psalm. Now, I don't know about you but I, I, I read this psalm often and there's been times when I've had to go and pray portions of this psalm, amen, when I let sin get between me and God and, and all you can do is get it right, amen, or else you will, you will, uh, you will have to suffer the consequences that are laid out here in this psalm. And so uh, we can relate to this psalm, uh, Psalm 51, and though we might not have committed the same sins as this man, we might not have ever prayed these exact words, but we've all known the feelings that the psalmist expressed in Psalm 51 here as he realized that sin had came between him and God. And this psalm comes from a broken heart. And, and uh, th this man has a, an exceeding sense of the sinfulness and the awfulness of sin. And uh, he, he cries out unto God for mercy and pardon and cleansing and forgiveness and restoration. And I want to just uh, make a couple of statements right here and then get into the thought. And this kind of shows you this psalm as a whole. But I'm glad uh, this can be said of much in the Bible. But Psalm 51, let me say this psalm is a simple psalm. It is a very simple psalm. And the writer don't beat around the bush. He gets right down to the point and he states the facts very clearly. It's a simple psalm, but it's also a singular psalm. It is a personal plea for forgiveness and, and there's no excuses made. There's no one else involved. It concerns a man who has sinned and the God against whom he has sinned. And it's just a singular psalm. That's what the whole psalm's about. Getting right with God, confessing his sin and getting it forgiven. And of course this psalm is a sincere psalm. It's a sincere psalm. And the psalmist is in dead earnest here. More serious than he's ever been. He's not trying to impress anybody. He means business. The words that we read here, not just words he thought up. They're words that came from the depths of his heart, friend. And he's very sincere in his confession of his sin here. And I'm glad to say this psalm is a shining example. It's a shining example. And it sets forth what we should all do in a similar situation. If you got sin in your life, just tell God about it. Just ask God. I'm talking about as believers, amen, as children of God. It'll work for the sinner too. But if you got sin in your life, just get it right. Don't go on in your sin. And there's many scriptures, and I'm thinking about Proverbs uh, uh, 28, 13, I believe it is. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. There, there's a lot of New Testament scriptures we could point out tonight that show us that uh, God does, does not enjoy his children living in sin. And it oftentimes brings about severe consequences in their life. Yes, he's a God of grace and he's a God of mercy, but he's also a God of, of judgment. Did you ever read, uh, did you ever read a lot of people know Psalm 917 where it says the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Did you know the verse right before that in Psalm 916 says the Lord is known by the judgment which he executeth. You can see that down through the pages of this Bible and down through the, the, the pages of history. You can see that the Lord revealed himself oftentimes in his judgment. 
And everybody knew that the Lord was at work and that he was the one uh, that was uh, causing the judgment. And so this man right here, he wanted to get right with the Lord. He wanted to get this sin. All through this psalm, he talks about the things that sin has done to him. And let me just say this. Now, we won't be able to probably look at all of them. I'll just have to mention some and go on. But he, he said, sin is affecting me inside and out. There's not a part of me that this sin is not affected in my life. And he, he shows us some of these things. He said, Lord, I want you to deal with this sin in my life and deal with its consequences. And, and he said, uh, and not only do I not want to sin, I don't even want to think about wanting to sin, Lord. I just want to get right with you. I just want to be how it used to be. And uh, among all the things that he prayed down through these first uh, dozen verses here, w one thing that he uh, that he uh, mentions here that I'd like to talk to you about tonight. He said, I sure do miss the joy I used to have. Yes, sir. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Now, let me say this. Now, you, you know this, but I want to emphasize one of the first signs that you are a child of God walking with the Lord is you'll have the overflowing joy of the Lord in your life. Amen. And we'll show you through some statements. If you don't have the joy of the Lord, I'm not talking about being happy. I'm talking talking about something that's on the inside. I'm talking about something you can't help, amen. It's just a natural result of the fullness of the Spirit. He said the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness. I, am I loud? Somebody tell me if I'm loud. I'm gonna move that down. He's controlling it back there. I, I know, I'm loud without the microphone, but I know you gotta have it for sake of the recording going out and all that, but I'll move that down if I need to, but I, I want my joy back, Lord. I just want my joy back, amen. I just want to sing like I used to sing, and I just want to show others that I got something worth having, amen. I just want my life to be filled with the joy of the Lord so that I don't even have to go witness them. They're coming to me and asking me questions, saying, what you so joyful about, amen. I've been thinking for three days on how happy a dead pig in the sunshine is, amen. I can't get that out of my mind. Now. Amen, amen. And so uh, uh, we uh, talked about that a little bit after the service our Sunday night. But uh, anyway, amen, that's, that's happy, amen. Uh, the, the joy of the Lord, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Let me give you several verses. I'm going to give them to you quickly here, and I got them wrote down. You won't have time to turn to them, but I, I'm just giving you a small portion. And by the way, let me say this. The, the word joy is found in your Bible 165 times. It is found 65 times in the New Testament, and so it's found 100 times in the Old Testament. The word rejoice which is the verb form of the word joy, not including rejoicing and rejoiceth, just the word rejoice is found in your Bible 192 times. It's found in the New Testament 45 times. So you got the word joy 65 times in the New Testament, the word rejoice 45 times. That's uh, 100 and, 100 and uh, by, let's see, 510 times, I believe. Is that right? And somebody add that up for me right there. I can't talk and add and all that, and I didn't count them up. Somebody count that up for me. Six, six, sixty. Uh, I can't even read my writing. Sixty-five and forty-five. I believe that's 110, isn't it? Uh, thank you very much. Amen. And so 110 times we find the New Testament. Let me give you some of these verses. Some of these are from the Old Testament. And you remember what the Lord said to Nehemiah and them in Nehemiah 8.10. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Uh, Psalm 16.11. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. We quoted that was Psalm 16, 11. Psalm 32, 11. We quoted a little bit of it a while ago. Be glad in the Lord and shout for joy. Ye righteous. Or he said be glad in the Lord and rejoice ye righteous and shout for joy all ye that are upright in heart. We mentioned Galatians 5, 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such 
Yes, there is no law. Uh, we, we find in uh, the New Testament, the apostle said in Acts chapter 20 and verse 24, that I might finish my course with joy. Amen. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel, the grace of God. You read that in its context and he was saying a lot of things and I'm paraphrasing, but he said a lot of things happened to me along the way. A lot of things lie ahead. I don't understand them all. I'll tell you one thing. I don't know what's going to happen to me when I go to Jerusalem. But I just want to finish my course with joy. And the ministry which I received of the Lord Jesus testify the gospel. Grace of God. He did too over in 2 right. Timothy chapter 4. He said, for I am now ready to be offered. Amen. The time of my departure is at hand. And you can do the word studies there. And they tell me that the words that he used indicated that when they came to get him, he almost ran to get his head cut off. He had done said in another place, I'd be better off dead, amen. He said to live as Christ, to die as gain. He said, I'm in a straight betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better, amen. And so uh, I, I, we find here that Jesus said in John 15, 11, these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. From Romans 5, 11, we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have now received the atonement. Romans 14 17 for the kingdom of God is not uh, meat and drink but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs> Amen. The Bible's not a charismatic Bible either, friend. That's what the Bible said. <laughs> now, some of the charismatics got it mixed up and twisted up. But it's all right to be happy in the Holy Ghost. Amen, amen, amen. That's a Bible word. Well, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, rejoice evermore. Philippians 4, 4, again, I rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say unto you, rejoice. David said, I miss my joy. I want it back, Lord. And when I get it back, I'm going to start testifying and witnessing and pointing others to you. But I ain't no good. I'm just depressed and defeated and down and dour and, and, and life has no meaning without the joy of the Lord, my soul, Lord. Just want my joy back, Lord. I want to preach for a few minutes on the joy of the Lord's salvation. Restore unto me the the joy of thy salvation. And thank God a child of God cannot lose their salvation. That's been proved over and over. The Bible shows us that. But you can lose the joy of your salvation. And there's really only one thing that'll cause you to lose the joy of your salvation. And it's simply sin. Amen. Sin will cause you to lose the joy of your salvation. Let me give these to you right here. The, the psalmist wanted the Lord to deal with the sin and all of its consequences. And, uh, John Phillips points out seven of those. And I'm going to just give you a brief uh, statement about each one. He, he wanted the Lord to cleanse the sin and deal with its consequences, verses 7 through 12. In, in verse number 7, he talks about sin's defilement. Sin contaminates you. It makes you dirty. It makes you filthy. It defiles you. David said, I'm, I'm dirty, I'm contaminated, I'm defiled. Right. Lord, I want you to deal with that. Psalm 51, 7, Psalm 51, 8, sin's deafness. He said, I want you to deal with the deafness of sin, Lord. Sin makes you deaf to the voice of God. and It makes you deaf to the, all the sounds of joy. Sin deafens you. Yes. He's showing us. The sin, if we don't deal with it, what it'll do to us, it'll defile us, it'll deafen us. Sin disgraces you, Psalm 51, 9. It makes you ashamed as one that gets caught at something uh, and a uh, one that gets caught in a crime and, and the camera comes along, the news media comes along. They just want to hide their face from the camera, so to speak, and they're disgraced. That's what sin will do to you. It will disgrace you. Sin will 
damage you. Sin damages. Amen. Psalm 51 10, he deals with that. And, and, and he wanted a new heart. He wanted a clean heart. And, and, and the word picture there is the same as regeneration in John 3. I, I want to be made new. I want to be born again. Amen. Sin will, uh, sin will damage you. Sin will doom you. Sin will doom you. Amen. And, and uh, you know, there's many, many scriptures that come to mind, but for sake of time, we'll talk about them some other time. You won't talk at the service. We can give you a lot of different scripture references. He mentioned, uh, cast me not away from thy presence. To be cast away from God's presence is the ultimate doom of the wicked. Amen. And, and David was afraid that he might have earned that doom. And we talked about how that he had seen Saul become the tormented victim of an evil spirit. And he said, Lord, I don't want that to happen to me. He turned to the right source. He turned to the only one who could help him in this situation. He knew of no resource except God to prevent these consequences. There's uh, sin's depression in Psalm 51, 12. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Now I want to be real careful right here, but I'm convinced that much depression in the lives of Christians today is caused by unconfessed sin. You don't need a psychiatrist or a psychologist. You just need to get your heart right. Maybe you need to take your Bible into a private place and maybe you just need to read these words to God and read them as your own prayer and cry them from your own heart. I've did it. Guess what? It works. You go with a broken heart and you read these five or six times. You read these words and you read them until you begin to say them to God. Thank God he's merciful. He wants you to be right with him. He don't want sin between you and him. He'll forgive you. He'll cleanse you. He'll restore you and he'll use you. Amen. These, uh, these words that the psalmist wrote here, they will work and, and much of the depression today. Yeah, and uh, I've mentioned before, some of you was here. Uh, I filled in one Sunday, I guess when Brother Avery's wedding took place. Some of you was going up to his wedding. We filled in. Many of you were here. And, and I think I talked about heaven a little bit in both services. And, and I, I, I pointed out that uh, if you want to be depressed and down and dour and sour, then just get your eyes on this world right here. If you want a heart full of joy, and if you want to, if you want to have the joy of the Lord in your life, then get your eyes on that which is above. Set your affection on things above. Seek those things which are above. A lot of people are depressed today because their mind and their eyes are stuck on this world down here. Having a heavenly mindset is one of the greatest uh, 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 weapons that we have to keep from being depressed. Amen. Right. Amen. You're Keep right. your eyes on the Lord. Keep your eyes on heaven. Look to him. Amen. Set your affection on things above. And uh, so anyway, he said, I want you to deal with sin's depression, Lord. I, I'm going to pretend to look up and look back there at the clock and act like I'm about out of time. All right. I don't see a clock back there, but I, I'm going to try to just be brief right here. All right. He said, not on that. He said, I want you to deal with sin's defeat. And I, I made mention of this already and this also in verse 12. He, he wanted never again to fall into such sin. He wanted to be kept from committing uh, such sin again, even from thinking about and wanting to commit such sin again. He wanted a thorough cleansing which would deal with every aspect of sin in his life. I want to give you I want to give you three simple thoughts here tonight concerning the joy of the Lord's salvation. And I might just give them to you and come back some other time and get the sub points because I got some sub points underneath all right but I don't know if we'll deal with all that but let me just mention uh, let me try to run through these number one I want you to know this salvation is associated with joy salvation is associated with joy I got a lot of scriptures I'm going to give you two here and I'm going to make some comments and I'm going to move on all right Luke 15 7 I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repents 
repentance. More than over 99 just persons that need no repentance. Verse 10, Luke 15, 10. Likewise I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Well, I'm glad they rejoice about sinners getting saved up there. I'm glad folk down here on earth rejoice about being sinners getting saved. I tell you, friend, I, I never enjoyed rejoicing in the Lord like I did at the moment of my salvation. When that load of sin was lifted, when that heart was made clean, and I can't explain it, but it felt like the weight of the world was lifted off of me, amen. Oh, I, I didn't know that you could have such a high as the joy of the Holy Ghost and the joy of the Lord and the peace of the Lord. I didn't have them before. Right. Oh, when I got them, I rejoiced. Yeah. God's people's the only ones I know can cry in life at the same time and not be crazy. Amen. 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 That's right. I remember when I got saved, I was crying and laughing at the same time. If you asked me, what in the world are you doing? I'd have said, I don't know, but I know one thing, I'm not going to hell anymore. Amen. Well, yeah. salvation is yeah. associated with joy. Hey. Let me just mention these. Uh, let me show you why salvation is associated with joy. Or joy is associated with salvation. Hell's defeated. When I got saved, I didn't know anything about the Bible. I didn't know any songs. I didn't know any verses of Scripture. But when I got saved, I knew this. I'm not going to hell anymore. Amen. Amen. Let's Amen. see. You know, that's been 40 years ago. <laughs> hey man, 40 years ago, guess what? I'm still glad I'm not going to hell, hey amen. Just because I received the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ, just because of the blood he shed and the, the gospel that he brought about, that his death, burial, and resurrection, I, they saved my soul, gave me a life worth living, thank God. I, I'm glad I'm saved and I'm not going to hell. That makes me rejoice. Not only that, I didn't know this for a long time. I was just glad I wasn't going to hell, but after going to church and Sunday school, and Wednesday night prayer meeting and revival, I found out not only am I not going to hell, but I'm going to heaven. Amen. <laughs> I, pri I primarily got saved to keep from going to hell. I didn't even know that I got on a new road, yeah. headed a new place, yeah. a straight and narrow way. And I, <laughs> I'm rejoicing today because the Bible tells me to. Yeah. Notwithstanding the this, rejoice not because the Spirit is said to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Amen. <laughs> My name's written in heaven. Yeah. I'm rejoicing yeah. about that. I kept on learning. I'm still learning today. But I found out I'm not going to hell. I am going to heaven. And then I've got a helper that I can depend on. Then you know, you can go in here and preach on the sweet Holy Spirit of God. The, the other comforter, Jesus said he was sending back. Not only that, but I've got a hope that's steadfast and sure tonight. Amen. What are you so joyful about? If I'm not going to hell. I'm going to heaven. I'm never alone through anything I go through. And thank God I got God's word that gives me a hope that's steadfast and sure. Salvation's associated with joy. Number two, salvation's joy can be lost. You can lose the joy of the Lord's salvation. You can't lose your salvation, but you can lose the joy of the Lord's salvation. And and uh, I got a bunch of W's here. I don't know four or five. I probably won't preach them. I'll just mention them. And you could name a lot of things, but it all boils down to sin. Let me mention some sins that will cause you to lose the joy of the Lord's salvation in your heart and life. How about wrongdoing? James 4, 17, therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Now I know this, I, I know you ain't gonna like this right here, but what about that sin of worry? Worrying. Yeah, yep, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Let me go ahead and say, I already know the word worry is not in the Bible. You will not find the word worry in your King James Bible, but you do find the principle of worry there. He calls it in 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your care upon him. He says in Psalm 55, 22, cast thy burden upon the Lord. He said in Philippians 4, 6, be careful for nothing. Right. Don't don't be full of care. Right. And in plain North Georgia English, that means don't worry. Amen. Amen. Don't be full of care. Right. Jesus 
taught the principle of worry in Matthew chapter 6 verses 25 through 33. I believe six times he used the phrases, why take ye thought or take ye no thought? In other words, why are you worried? Right. Why are you worried about your food? The Father feeds all the fowls of the earth. They don't plant gardens. They don't build barns. They don't put stock away. They don't sow and they don't reap. Yet the heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not of much more value than many sparrows? Right. Man, That's good. What are you worried about something to eat for? That's good. Uh, what are you worried about clothing for? That's right. This is sounding familiar, isn't it? Having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Amen. I'm just, I, he's fired me up. I'm just building on what he started on. It's his fault. Amen. Blame him. Why are you worried about what you're going to wear? And I'm paraphrasing here, all right. Haven't you looked at the lilies? Yeah. Ha haven't you seen that they don't sow clothes for themselves? They toil not, neither do they spend. Yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory is not as beautiful as one of these lilies. <laughs> Why are you worried about yeah. what you're going to wear? Amen. <laughs> Amen. And, and on it goes. Jesus is telling us not to worry. Why do we worry? Don't be full of care. Take no thought for these things. Amen. But seek ye first the kingdom of God he says. And so that sin of, of worrying. What about uh, that sin of waste? Or are you wasteful? I'm, I'm not. Uh, let me just say, I've been guilty and I'll probably be guilty again. God help me and God forgive me. But uh, how about that Ephesians 5, 15 and 16? See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools but as wise, redeeming the time for the days are evil. Right. I don't always walk wisely and circumspectly. Matter of fact, I'm pretty foolish a lot of times. I'm not, uh, I'm just confessing here, all right. I, I'm pretty foolish with my, my Christian walk sometimes, and I want God to help me. I don't want to be foolish in my Christian walk. I want to make the most out of every opportunity. I, 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 want, to, I want to redeem the time. You know, some of you can testify to this. But uh, the older you get, the faster time seems to move on. Yes, sir. And the faster time seems to move on, the less important many things that used to be really important become. Amen. 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 Redeeming the time because the days are waste wastefulness. How about our how about our wants? How about our wants in comparison to his will? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And, and, and I, I mentioned this a while ago, but we get too busy with the material and the temporal and we don't focus enough on the eternal. I go back to Colossians 3. Set your affection. He said, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. I don't always do that. I'm saved. I've been risen with Christ, but I don't spend enough time seeking those things which are above where Christ sat on the right hand of God. My heart sat on this world oftentimes, I'm sad to say. I, I, I've acted like a lot of other Christians I know. Like this world's all there is and like we're going to live here on this earth forever. That's not so. I, I need to turn my heart toward heaven. Amen. I, I need to set my affection on things above, not on things of the earth. And I need to begin to practice what he said. Mortify my members which are upon the earth. I'm trying to work on that. I'm trying to be more heavenly minded. Amen. That'll keep me busy doing what I need to be doing on earth. Amen. Amen. <laughs> now, the, let me just say this. And I, a lot of preachers have said it, but the, 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 the preacher that said, oh, I'm going to get in trouble right here. I know I will, but I'm sorry, friend. The, the preacher or preachers that said that you can be so heavenly minded you'll be of no earthly use, he didn't get that out of the Bible. That's right. He did not get that out of the Bible. The Bible tells us to set our heart and our affection and our mind on things above. Right. We're supposed to focus on heaven and God and godliness and godliness and content and like that. Amen. Right. And we're supposed yeah. to think about heaven. And as we become heavenly minded, it causes us to be busy on earth trying to get others to go right. with us. Right. Amen. Brother. You can't be too heavenly minded. Right. That's not in the Bible. Come on. Amen. I'm just telling you, friend. 
Oh, you heard a lot of things ain't in there. You're reading your Bible or straighten your theology out, That's friend. Right. Yes. Amen. Right. How about... Uh, how about worldliness? Worldliness. I'm talking about the joy of salvation can be lost. And there's a lot of scriptures. 1 John 2, 15 and 16. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and, and the pride of life. And is not. And let me, let me, get, let me back up. I'm, I'm trying to put a bunch of verses together and get them out at one time. All right. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Now that's not talking about John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. There's three words that the word world's translated from. One is the, the worldly system, the world's way of doing things. That's what he's saying not to love. And, and, and one is uh, when God so loved the world, he's talking about all the people on the earth, amen. And right now the third one escapes me, but there's three words translated world, amen. And, and I guess one of them is just uh, the, uh, the earth itself. Is, uh, the word world is talking about the earth itself. So, so in its context, find out which world he's talking about. He's saying don't love the way the world does things. Right. And he said if you love the way the world does things, then the love of the Father's not in you. He, he said that for all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life is not of the Father but is of the world. The world passed away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Worldliness, worldliness is a sin that causes you to lose the joy of your salvation. Number one, salvation has joy associated with it. Yep. Number two, salvation's joy can be lost. Mm -hmm. Brother John, you come, I'm done. Number three, Thank God can. salvation's joy can be restored. Amen. Salvation's joy can be restored. Amen. If you are concerned enough about not having the joy of the Lord's salvation. If you're concerned enough that you've lost it, if you care and if you'll confess that you've let sin come between you and God and, and because of his cleansing, and it's laid out plain and simple. I'm finished with this right here. First John chapter one, verses six through 10. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Salvation's joy can be restored. And if you don't know what to pray and how to get it right, just turn to Psalm 51 and just start reading it out of a sincere broken heart to God. It is a psalm of repentance restoration. God wants you to be right with him. He don't want sin between you and him. He wants you to be full of the joy of the Lord so that people are asking you, what is that that you've got? Amen. I want to know more about it. Amen. Lord, thank you for the good liberty tonight. I tried my best to give them what you gave me. I pray that you'd use it tonight if there's somebody here that they've allowed sin to come between you and them and they've lost the joy of your salvation. I pray you'd help them, Lord, to think on these scriptures and maybe look at this man's life and maybe read and reread and reread this psalm until they get their heart right. If there's one here lost tonight, please speak to their heart. And I know that you want them to experience peace that passeth all understanding, joy unspeakable and full of glory, and love which passeth knowledge. And I pray that you'd help them tonight to come to you, repent of their sin, and find out what it is to have and know the joy of the Lord in their heart. Thy will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together while we sing tonight.